welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy, Ivorian Spice, and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 9. And remember guys, if you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe, like, and also remember to share. Sharing is caring. And anyway, guys, welcome. I've got my trusted boys. I've got Amuk here. What are you saying, bro? Yeah, I'm feeling this again. Another day, another time to talk about the club that we love. Yes, and I've got my boy Jax as well. What are you saying, Jax? I'm good, bro. I'm uh, looking forward to the show. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Let's do this, guys. Let's do this. As you know, if you are new to the catch up, this is a weekly chat show where we, we, we go about speaking about what's been going on in the previous week, all the news, if we have match that we, matches that we like to talk about, wow. or previous matches, of course, we will talk about that. Hot topics as well. Whatever's going on in the world of Manchester United, we will be discussing. And remember, guys, this is the popular opinion show, guys. Remember to keep it keep it wavy as always. <laughs> We're gonna talk about the first topic of the day, guys. And of course, I've prepped you guys already, gave you guys your uh, what's it called, the topics of discussion. Um, so what's been going on? We're gonna talk first of all. First thing we need to talk about is what's currently going on right now in the transfer window. Mm -hmm. As you know, guys, we have been linked to Regulion. Within the 24 to 48 hours, we were close to getting an agreement with Real Madrid, going back and forth. And now we're at the situation where Tottenham now has snatched the deal, mm -hmm, close to signing him, all because Manchester United do not want to put a buyback clause um, when negotiating to Madrid, not even paying the 30 million euro asking fee. Manchester United want to pay something less, guys. They want to pay between 20 to 25 million euros <laughs> and not have a buyback clause because they think, of course, they are too prestige to be, be a club that will have a buyback clause for a player for Real Madrid. And I can't agree more. Manchester United are not a team where we buy a player and then we, we agree a buyback and say, well, no, next year you can have him back. No. no. We buy players for the long-term vision. Long-term, long-term, what, what did they say? Longevity. That's it. That's it. Yes, guys. That's it. That's it. Exactly. So, guys, tell me. I'm going to start with you, Amuk. Um, What do you think about this whole situation? Do you think um, Manchester United are wrong? Ed Woodward's going moving mad? Or, like, we've done the right thing? Or like we're not dickheads, like you can't just come out of nowhere and just start commanding what you want. What what the ish? You don't do that. What do you think, bro? I could just go back to last week what we were saying here. Mm -hmm. Do you remember we said uh, you actually made a joke that made me laugh so hard saying you wouldn't even sell virus to Real Madrid. Yeah. So just going back towards that, I would say us doing deal with Real Madrid is something I'm not really happy about. And the player himself is not a bad place, actually a talented player, but Doing deal with Real Madrid is difficult. As much as I feel like Manchester United should do much more better than what we've done so far, we <coughs> need players and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that deal with Real Madrid not going through, for me, I feel a bit okay about it, which means that we should go for the other options that we've got in the list. Like you said, Tottenham came from nowhere to snatch the deal. So if someone does that to you, what you got to do is, Try another option. What was the other name that we mentioned last week? It was Tellers. Tellers. Porto. Why not go get him? Because that's who we all agreed on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if that deal didn't go through, I believe Manchester should look up to the other option. And Ed is, you know, we, we all know Ed. Yeah. Ed is do. someone that he loves money. He is like a cheap skate. He's a businessman. Um, whether he's a good businessman, that's a question because he does some stupid things. If he was a good businessman, we'll have a director of football. Success comes with money, more businesses. He's you know? greedy. But mm -hmm. the owners are happy with the financial performance, so that's the only they, reason why they don't care about the club, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just a but financial vehicle for them. Edge should do more because at the end of the day, this ain't about just owners. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with something like the club itself, Manchester United, which is like the nation's pride. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, the club that caliber, and it's just sad and pathetic that I'm actually talking about this, going through what we're going through. We shouldn't go through what we're going through. We should be one of the clubs that, I'm actually at Mayor Chelsea, they are like a go-getter. Mm -hmm. You name one person, mm -hmm. name. But what we do these days, is that we got shot list that takes five years to go through. <laughs> but what's your personal opinion of this whole transfer? Did I just think I make the right move, or...? For me, it's 50-50, just because I don't know too much about the player himself, and just because doing deal with Real Madrid is something that I actually don't like, so I would say 50-50, because I still believe we need to sign players. It would have been a better option if we did get him, but we don't have him now, 
So we should get someone else. Cool. And Jax, what do you think about this whole Regalian situation? Bro, no surprises. Let me just mention two names for you. Haaland. We were supposed to sign him in. The negotiation was poor. We didn't want to put a transfer. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't want to put a transfer on his contract. Which, which, which was Which that? was 50 million, I believe. A release million, clause. A transfer release clause. Thank you. Um, Bellingham again. We gave him a tour of Manchester United. He's gone <laughs> again to Dortmund. And, uh... Until we get a sporting director, until we get somebody that can negotiate and who is someone that's respected in the market, we will be going through this for a long time, unfortunately. I feel like other clubs worldwide, Real Madrid involved, any, anyone else, when it comes to Ed Woodward, the deal will not, will not get done, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It will not get done. He so with Reglion, yeah. unfortunately, I know that's probably going to go, he's going to go to Tottenham. Um, I'm not too fast. If we can get Tellers, but knowing the way we move, we'll probably wait until the 31st of September for him to come. So let's just see. I'm not surprised. Our uh, board does move half wide when it comes to transfers, mm -hmm. especially especially the whole Haaland situation. Making up excuses about how is the agent, oh X, Y, and Z. Especially now, we're not we're not going to be dickheads. No one can bully us. We're a prestigious club. We was a prestigious club, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're now beggars. We're beggars. Let's be real, guys. We're kind of like beggars. We're not successful anymore. Mm -hmm. So, like the whole situation with Regalian, mm -hmm. not. Not what's called making a bid. You know what? What I thought, if they didn't want to get the buyback clause, at least match the bid. Meet someone 50 50, halfway. Mm -hmm. Not just say, oh yeah, we are interested, but we'll give you 20, 20 million euros or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we don't want a buyback clause. But you know, like, I'm trying to sell you something that will help you, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. You don't want to give, you don't want the buyback clause. We can't get it next week. But at least meet my asking price to make things easier. Sure. Meet my asking price to make things easier, but then again, they're like, no, no, we're too prestigious out here. We're creme that creme. We don't do buyback clauses, man. You don't just sell players to us with a buyback clause. We don't have no intention. You can't do none of that shit with us. But again, sadly, guys, we've lost out on another transfer target, and yet we sit here with Donny Van der Beek, the only signing with Jaden Sancho. The whole situation going, I don't know, no left, right. I don't know what's going on with James Sancho, but I'm hoping something can happen. What, guys? Um, I'm all, what? What do you think about the current situation with James Sancho? Because like, he's coming, he's not coming. We've agreed transfer deals. We have it. Like everyone's saying all this stuff. Like, you know, I like the player himself. I so I like Sancho as a player himself, right? And to be honest with you, as a Manchester fan, I felt like I'd given up because where we from and what we believe in. If you do want something, you should go get it. Exactly. Like, if you liked a woman and you really wanted her, go. You go for it. And what did Beyonce <laughs> say? Mm -hmm. Put What's a ring on it. You know what I mean? Uh, no more stuff. No, 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 no. Stuff, right? If you want it, you gotta put a ring on it. <laughs> so, like, if we got someone who's been in the media for the past, if I could be right before Corona started, Manchester always wanted this player. If I was right, I believe we've been after Sancho since early this year or yeah. last year. Yeah. And you've seen how the media, how even the players, I've seen Sancho play for England. I see the relationship with the other Manchester players. It's beautiful. So if we should have gone for Sancho earlier, mm -hmm. I think Manchester as a team or the we have the owners or Ed Woodward or whatever, I don't think they should have had this much pressure on them. Because they like we should do done we should do what Bayern Munich does, get the deal done early, mm -hmm. and get ready for the next season. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm upset about we go into Champions League right with the same team. It's just one person that made that we've signed so far, which is Van der Beek. I'm excited, but is he really going to change the club for Champions League games? I don't think so. Yeah, Sancho, be more, but Sancho yeah. would be better a little bit because at least we've got that threat. Mm -hmm. I've seen teams like example Man City. I promise you, he ever came from he ever comes from the uh, 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 the bench. It's a threat. Mm -hmm. So why can't we do the same thing? We we, we chasing Champions League. We haven't been to Champions League two seasons. I haven't watched Manchester play in Champions League for the past two seasons. 
Yeah, we need players. <laughs> I'm upset, Patrick. Like you can tell, last week I was a little bit excited. He's so upset. But now I'm my, so upset. My, my, my government name. That's how much upset he is. You get me, guys? <laughs> He's that upset. He's just calling me my government name. <laughs> but Jess, what do you think about Jaden Sancho? Are we going to sign or does he look like we're going to sign? Listen, let's not think about it. Yeah. Let's wait to the last day mm -hmm. of the transfer window. Do you think it's going to be the last day of the transfer yes, too? Yes, 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 yes. Towards that end. Because to be honest with you, Dortmund have said this, how many months has it been? Since two months ago, one month ago. I think they've been saying this want, January. All we want is 110 mil, 20, 120 20 million euros. euros. Yeah, 108 pounds. Need that or go million. away. Mm -hmm. 100, just pay it. Because if we wait till next season, it's going to cost more. We made the same mistake with Fernandez. We waited six months to sign Fernandez and ended up paying the same price in which they initially asked. Let's just get the deal done. 108 million, if not, publicly say we are not. It's too much money in this coronavirus, in, uh, in whatever's happening, we can't afford to pay for it. And the and funny thing away. about it is that Manchester United have to deliver because they pulled it out in the media that they were interested, they wanted to buy this guy. He has come out, Central has come out and publicly said he would love to drain. He doesn't and come they... out publicly, but. He has said to many people that he would love to join the club. He wants Spice, to join. They also agree a deal with the player himself. Exactly. Yeah. So if you've done all of this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't you think the fans are going to get excited? Yeah, exactly. Which we all did. And how, how long, how many days have we got left to this, on the transfer when you close it? Until the end of this month. Until the end of this month. And to be honest with you, I could just, I'm not being negative or anything. I'm just going to be that one of the fans here is bro about the feelings. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to sign Sancho. Okay. And it hurts me, it hurt, it hurt me to say that. I don't think, because if we was going to sign Sancho, I believe that deal would have been done time ago. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So as, as it looks like right now, he doesn't believe. I'm still 50-50. He is about 50-50. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we move on to the next topic. Um, we have, guys, let's talk about Mason Greenwood and the way he's been bullied by the British media <laughs> press. <laughs> Yes, guys, I'm not going to let this go. Yes, we can never let this go. It hurts me to, to the fact that, guys, they happened after the whole situation with Mason Green with the English, England camp. For some reason, videos of, of him um, doing hippie crap, I never knew it was called hippie crap because I thought it was just called balloons. <laughs> but since they want to make it worse because a person of colour is, is, is in a situation and... It is what it is, guys, a person of colour, because if it was Phil Foden, it would just be called balloons. He was doing balloons. But because it's Mason Greenwood, he was doing hippie crap. And this is a video of him that emerged of him in the past. No tattoos. He's not booked. He doesn't look booked up. Booked up. It looks like they've chased and looked for a video from a year plus. Maybe one of his bedrooms snaked him. But yes, guys, they have chased and digged out a video in the past just to, just to shame him, just to make things worse, guys. What do you think about this whole situation? Um, Jen, I will start with you. What do you think about this situation? Do you know what? It used to hurt me. I remember there was an incident a year or two ago with Sterling where he bought a house mm -hmm. and I think some fancy watches or something anyway. The way the media ripped him for that. I remember that. I remember the way that. the media <laughs> ripped him for that, as if... What? Don't movie stars buy expensive houses. Don't football coaches buy expensive houses. Don't anyone with a high-paying job. You're going to buy an expensive house. Just Why are you going to... Expensive cars, everything. Ronaldo's got expensive car and houses, but no one talks about it like that. But then Phil Foden, a, just a few months earlier, had such a positive reaction to him buying the same things that Sterling bought. So to be honest with you, this Greenwood situation... Yeah. I'm almost numb to it because it's to be expected. This thing happened a few months back and they're bringing it up now. Even in the current climate of the Black Lives Matter situation, I feel that they're very insensitive. And um, sure. to be fair, the media doesn't really affect me too much anymore. It's just obvious what they're doing. So it's not even worth talking about. We are so numb to the pain. It's like this. You can just be punching us in the face. We just have a straight face. Like mm -hmm. That's how much it is. That's how bad it is, guys. And Emma, what do you think of the whole situation? It hurt me, though, because I still believe he's a young star. Mm -hmm. He still needs education. Mm -hmm. He still needs guidance. And, for example, if I can elaborate a little bit, before the same week UK had that lockdown, mm -hmm. yeah. um, what's his name? Grealish. If, as much as I like him, yeah. 
He partied the night before mm-hmm. and had a crash the next day. Mm-hmm. Maybe that he, he posted a video of him saying, guys, stay home, stay safe. <laughs> yeah, Don't go out, oh, you don't have the NHS. And then the next day, cancel it. No, 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 you're going to say, no. You see As soon as he locks off the recording, where are we going? Where are we going, bro? We're going to be going out, isn't it? Yeah. It's true. As soon as he locks off the recording, it's like, bro, where are we going again? Why is so How sorry? long did that bachelor situation took in the media? Uh, it lasted two days or three days, that's it. That's it. And no, you know what I mean? no one went back and on it. I still believe that should have been dealt with properly because you're a footballer, professional, and the government just put on a lot of that lockdown, no parties or something, and you did. So crash you, your car. And you crashed your car. Probably drink drive to you. It was drunk. No, it was drunk. It was drunk. That's, that's right. So don't you think that would no. be what talked about? And what, what makes it worse that he crashed his car and fled? That's a criminal case right there. So that is a case right there. He crashed the car and fled. If that was a hit and run, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> but as I said, yeah, I, like um, Jake said, we all numb to that because it's something that we've been seen, we've heard, we've watched. Yeah. It's just sad and pathetic that someone his age could make these type of mistakes or error, mm-hmm. and you don't see leaders coming forward. Like I said last week, Harry, um, um, Harry, Harry Kane. And thumbs up, Tyree. I love you for that. We need to see more people like you. Not just calling you, but checking up on you. These are youngsters. Just imagine the potential this kid got. You know what I heard? Someone that wants to said that. <laughs> Someone wants to said that. I bet you it was Harry, Harry Kane that called all those two Icelandic <laughs> trippers. Because the moment he saw Mason Greenwood in, in, in training, he must have thought, Damn, that's, that guy's a real deal. He might give me up as well. No, yeah, you say him up. Like, come out to the hotel room. <laughs> because... Feel for them when they fold. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. <laughs> but it's just a shame. I still believe they could have worked around this ten times better than how it means are. Yeah. And it's just for me. All I can say right now, we can't really pay attention to the media to you when it comes to this particular topic. Yeah. yeah. I believe Manchester as a club should do more because this is your player. We're coming into a new season. This is gonna affect him because we saw where he how he finished up last season. Mm-hmm. We don't want to see him start the new season before type of play that we don't understand. And we, obviously, we all know what's gonna we're gonna say. Oh, it's because of this, because of that. Mm-hmm. But helping this young star, I think Manchester should do better. Mm-hmm. Even if it's like cancelling, not like a, a month cancelling, but like a week cancelling, like two days a week. Mm-hmm. Like just telling you, young, not. Telling you bad stuff, but giving positive vibe. Mm-hmm. See, you young, you can do this. We mm-hmm. see you become the next star. Yeah. Mentally, that's going to improve his mentality and character. Because yeah. Rooney, when Rooney came to Manchester, he was also one of them. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? So at the end of the day, I still believe Mason needs to learn more. He's too young. He needs to learn. And the media should actually stay away from him a little bit. And just actually seeing positive things about him. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, yeah. but they should do something. They should, because to be fair, if the media were actually on England's side with the English players, I assure you, since 1960, England might have won the World, World Cup. Cup. That golden generation probably would have won the World Cup. And the media are just, just too damn on these players, true. and it breaks morale, it breaks spirit. It's true. You know? I was a kid, I didn't even remember half of it, but I know it's probably off topic in that, but. Watching, um, how do you call him? This player, um, no, the former number eight for England. Uh, who is Scholes? Gascoigne. Who? Gas- is it Paul Gascoigne? Oh, Paul Gascoigne, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Watching, I was a kid, watching, is it, two, is it 1996 World Euro, Euros? Mm-hmm. England should have won that. Okay. They should have won that. I just emphasized the way you said. Yeah. They should have won that. Mm-hmm. Well, we have to move on. Um, of course, on the weekend, Manchester United did play, guys. We did unfortunately lose 1 0 to Aston Villa, but one of the brightest aspects was the performance of Donny van der Beek. He made his debut, he was exceptional, threading passes, finding ball, finding spaces, intelligent runs. So, from what I saw, guys, I don't know if you guys saw the match, but I saw a very good performance, and I'm very pleased with the side of Donny van der Beek. I can see some good things happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if any of you guys watched the match. Did you guys watch the match or catch the highlights? I watched the highlight. Like, I told you, I watched that 10 minutes. What did you think of the, of the match briefly? To be honest with you, I was disappointed that we lost. But like I said, I, I can only take one positive, which is the new signing 
watch him play, it was a delight for yeah. me. Because at the end of the day, there's something that even Bruno doesn't do it. And you just mentioned it. He does it. He will put the ball where he believes he should go get. Finding space. Mm -hmm. And that's how the team is playing, finding space. And when you play and find space, I promise you, you're going to give that defense pressure. You're mm -hmm. going to give them a whole lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And we got some of the fine space. And I don't know if it, I don't know if it, it's a Dutch thing. Oh, they're clever. Mm -hmm. No, it's no, clever. Dutch, 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 yeah, Dutch players bro. are flamboyant, very technical. Mm -hmm. They've been taught how to play with many different know, like, positions, especially mm -hmm. when they're in an academy. They learn how to play different positions. Mm -hmm. That's why they know where to be when they're off the ball. Remember Glenn? He played everywhere. Center like back, left yes. back, DM, yeah. seven mid. Seven mid. Yeah. <laughs> and they actually compare them to. A former defender, you know. Who's that? Oh, Stam. Stam, yeah, Stam. Yeah. I want to go that far, you know. No, they were not not the really <laughs> thing. It's just it's just it's just the the Dutch mentality. Okay. How yeah, 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 yeah. That presentation. Uh -huh. right, 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 right. And what about you, Jake? Did, did you get catch the match or? Did you I have didn't, unfortunately. Um, to be honest with you, I'm not too concerned with that game. No, it was only a friendly. Yeah. Um, and it was just an opportunity for some players to get a run out. Um, Van der Beek, I heard, played well, and that's a good positive to take from that game. All eyes on Crystal Palace. Yes, which is three points is required straight right. away because Liverpool have won their game. We're going to talk about that later. Mm -hmm. um, Arsenal had a good win. Mm -hmm. Good win, very good win. Um, Chelsea had a good win. Uh, I watched the whole nine minutes. Not a good win for you. I would say in the second half, especially in the first half, Brighton had plenty of opportunities to equalise. Okay, they were trying their best. As soon as they equalised and Chelsea scored that second goal, it didn't play for them and then from there they took over and made it 3-1. I wouldn't say they had the best games. Fair enough. Mm. But yeah, we will be on because guys, of course, we are, our match against Palace is this weekend. So make sure you catch that. It's on a Saturday. I believe it's a late kickoff around 5.30. Mm -hmm. It could be on Sky Sports, of course, because usually most of the 5.30 kickoff games are on Sky Sports. So guys, make sure you catch that out. Mm -hmm. And we'll move on to what happened on the weekend. And one of the highlight match of the weekend was yeah. Liverpool versus Leeds. And guys... What a fabulous, fantastic match that was. <laughs> Leeds are on some next smoke, next crud. <laughs> Belts up. Bro, I'm asking myself, why, why didn't we get him? Uh, 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 why didn't we get him? Shoot. Why, why not? That guy is a tactician, he's a genius. And you know what? For an old man, he's, he was sitting on his own little stool for 90 minutes. I don't know any old man that can do that. Just, just be doing squats for 90 minutes, you know? But yeah, guys, what did you, did you guys catch the match? Because I, it was a tough match. At the end of the 90 minutes, you could see Jurgen Klopp say, wow. Yeah. No, even, even, <laughs> even, even, even the, uh, his interview after the match, he actually congratulated this team. Yeah, of course. He said, what a performance. Leeds will be a threat this season. Of course. That derby against Leeds is going to be in December. Right now, I'm happy that it's in December because I don't no, want them no, anytime no, soon. No, anytime soon. <laughs> what did you think about the match, Abu? I did tell you. I was just excited to see um, my man, was it called, cool? Van Dyke making that silly mistake. <laughs> I was really excited. It showed him. The reason I'm saying it, we went, we went through her last season, mm -hmm. people were saying, no dribbles, mm -hmm. no mistakes. Mm -hmm. But the first game in the Premier League season against Leeds United, as we mentioned last week, that Manchester, the old fans, we've struggled to play this thing for years. Mm -hmm. So but watch them play, coming back to the Premier League, watch them play, how they played last week, I was impressed. Was there the back and forth as Liverpool scores? Yeah, boom, they make it one one. Two, one, two, two. That back and forth was so good. Like it felt like I haven't seen. For me, it's the best match that went on this weekend. That mm. play, it yeah. was too beautiful. Mm -hmm. The quality of football was for, coming from a team that just came up the Premier League. Mm -hmm. I think other teams should be scared. Mm -hmm. I'm scared, slightly scared. I don't know if them right now because I don't even believe in my team to last you probably two or three phases. New phases. But Liverpool, I think they might not be in this. Like, like we all said before, we all gave City. Mm -hmm. I think we were right with our prediction last mm -hmm. time because it was a difficult match for Liverpool. But as, as, as we all see, they still won. Even though I believe the last ball was not penalty, it was 50-50. But the defender exposed his leg a little bit that gave the referee the opportunity to give. But for me, that's not penalty. I hear you. Fair enough. Jax, um, did you catch the match? Yeah, I did. Um, did you think? Very entertaining game. Yeah. Uh, I remember last week we actually noted that 
Leeds were not going to go down. And I feel like that game was just evident to that. They were amazing. They defended okay. But going forward, you wouldn't believe that it just came up. The championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they are the, the champion, championship champions. So they, they, bro. they can contest. They didn't play playoff though. They came up straight. They yeah, won the league. Yeah, they, they won, won the championship. Won the league. Um, so I am looking forward to those derbies. I reckon those derbies are going to be very great games. I'm hoping that fans are allowed back into the stadium because the atmosphere when it's United versus Leeds yeah. will be amazing. amazing. Albeit it's social been. distance, but we need the fans in there, man, definitely. definitely. But um, yeah, Leeds, watch out, man. You never know what they can do. Maybe mid-table, maybe knocking on the door of Europe. Maybe that's talking too soon. Who maybe knows? they might get relegated. You never know. Who knows? Yeah. The fact that they got in, it might be... Like you said, knocking the door of Europe's. Doing a Wolves thing, yeah? Yep. Let, let's, Seven, eight, six. Let's, okay. let's not go too far, guys. But um, during the weekend, you know, um, quick question. Um, did, is there any particular player that impressed you during the weekend? Not from Leeds or Liverpool, just in general. I would say, to be honest with you, as much as we all predicted them to relegate, but I was impressed with for Zaha. Against mm. for Palace this yeah. weekend. Mm-hmm. Zaha, he's made, he made that few runnings that I felt like I was impressed with and his goal was immaculous. That mm-hmm. pass and the way he just tapped the ball in, mm-hmm. that was I think he's gonna have a great season. Cool. I think he's gonna have a great season. And what about you, Jet? Um for me it hurts me to say but a banner young. Ah <laughs> of course he's this guy, his contract. Oh he's signed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. finally mm-hmm. um this guy is an incredible striker. For me he's probably top three in the Premier League and he just showed it again. Brilliant goal, great performance. Mm-hmm. I would say top two. That would be my key. Top, top two. two, yeah? Okay, what him and Aguero? He, no, him and Ken. Oh, of course, okay. I Fair grow him being that girl. I like him girl. I think he's, he's one of the best players. But him being that girl, that it's too many injuries. Isn't it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I can agree with, with uh, Abba Young. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I was one of the guys who got to when Arsenal signed him. I was thinking, what? Yeah. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. What are we doing? We we could have signed him. True. My player that impressed me the most, I think, was there was two that were playing for Everton, which was Allen. Alan, and yeah. also, of Alan. course, Hamas Rodriguez, very silky. They, he yes. was the first player that impressed me more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything he did, dot and what's good, it was like silk, just silk, just all around him. Great goals, cross field, just silky, everything, yeah. everything. Yeah. And also, yeah. funny about it is that I kind of rate him off. I thought he comes to the Premier League. I don't know he, the last few few seasons, but then again, I can't write off someone that was even when he was having the shittest part of his career was at Bayern Munich. Mm-hmm. And also, play for, Monaco, so he played for top clubs. I can't write off someone like that. Uh-huh. But I can write off Bill. I can write him off. Because he's not interested in playing football. Yeah. He likes golf. You never know. But that was my, my most impressive player during the weekend, guys. True. Uh, we can move on to our next topic. I kind of forgot what. Oh, let me just have a quick look. About he's gonna, uh... Yeah, yeah, cool. So we're going to the last couple of bits. Um, of course, we're going into a new season. We haven't completely signed all our players. The transfer window is still open. So I will probably ask you guys this question again once we've signed, once the transfer window is closed. Um, from the Manchester United camp, um, Amok, who do you who who do you think will be the most impactful player or who would you like to be the most impactful player for this season? Who will make the most of... I would say Pogba. Ah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you know why I say that? Mm-hmm. As much as we all know his quality, we all know what he does, he haven't, probably haven't really shown us what he done at, on, on Juve. Mm-hmm. Like, even when he was playing at United, that, I don't know if because of the different managers or different system or the club itself, but I want to see more because up to date, he's still one of the most expensive players. Mm-hmm. So I want to see more from Pogba. I love him. I really want to see more from him. I've seen enough of Bruno, I'm just yeah. really excited to see more. But Pogba and one person that it, it, this is just out of the top of my head because I watched him against the um, Aston Villa. Is it Aston Villa, right? Yeah. He was good, but I want to see more from him. Was James? I want to see. I want to see more from James. I was a little bit impressed that game, but I want to see more from James. Really and truly. And what about you, Jakes? Um, the hair. Why is that? For me, as much as I love him, mm-hmm. he's been a legend for years. He's been one of, he's been our best player for five years. Yeah, true. But um, this guy can't concentrate. Mm-hmm. He can't concentrate for ninety minutes, unfortunately. 
So I need him to pull off better performances and stop letting in stupid goals. Mm -hmm. And I'm delighted that we've signed Henderson because if De Gea is not up to the job, personally, I have full confidence in Henderson. I've seen him play many times. He is a quality goalkeeper. You watch. He's the next Manchester United number one. I guarantee it. Yeah, Henderson is a quality goalkeeper. I agree goal with keeper. you on that base. De Gea yes. needs that competition. I, mean, I reckon maybe this season yeah. he will play better because he knows if he messes up, Henderson, who signed 170, 120, 120 bags, bags a week. Once he's in the Prem. So I, don't, I, don't wanna, I, money. I don't want to be gassed about the hair, but I also, I still believe for me it's one, of the, it's, it's one of the best keepers in the world. I still believe better than Henderson. I still believe better than Liverpool's keeper. He is. Liverpool's keeper is just good because he's got very good defence that protects him. So, the hair is one of the best keepers in the world for me up to now. But it's good for him to have competition, like you said. Yeah, 100. And with me, I have to go with my boy Amok. I'm not going to lie to you. I have the feeling that this season with Donny van der Beek and Bruno Fernandes in midfield and with Matic and Fred, with McTominay, I think this is the season where we will see the best of Paul Pogba. And... Like he's got a lot to prove. He's been here for four years, and we haven't seen the best of him consistently mm -hmm. throughout the whole period of a season. Mm -hmm. I believe this season he will he will make people like Graham Sooner shut his mouth. The British media, go check that out. Some of you Max United fans, go check that out. We'll go be shutting your mouch. Old video. Go, go check the old video. Yes. <laughs> Pogba Watch. Go back. Look up old video. Pogba versus Sooners. Watch that. It's beautiful. But I believe he will be. He's the one that I believe that will be the most impactful player. This is the most impressive as well. So. I want that. I'm I praying it. for that, Pogba. I'll be praying for you every day. Trust every me. night. We every like night. you, Pogba. You're watching, if, bro. If you want me to fast for you, we'll do that too. I'll do that for you. Just we know not all Manchester fans like you mm. or pleased with what you do. Yes. But we just want to let you know that you got a whole lot of fan base. No, no. That actually cares friend. about you. On our son, Pogba. On our we son. see what you do. We know what you do and yes. what you're capable of doing. We just want to see more. Trust me, cool. And guys, we're coming close to the end. We just want to wrap it up. Um, we are close to the end of the show. Um, we are playing Crystal Palace again on the weekend, guys. Um, any predictions in terms of the, 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 the match prediction oh, against yeah. Palace? Are you playing home or away? I'm not too sure, you know. I'm not too sure if you're playing home. Are you sure? Let me just, you know what? But you know what? While, you're, you're, checking, you know what? while you're checking, while right. you're checking that, mm -hmm. um, I'd say regardless of whether it's home or away, we need three points. Yeah. This is the season where I feel like we need to improve on last season in terms of points. Of course. So we need to win points. home or away. It doesn't matter. I want us to be within that top three. So we need to have a good start, to be honest with you. And to be fair, we need to rectify that result that we had against Palace at the start of last season where they beat yeah. us at Old Trafford. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So everything that we done wrong last season, we need to correct it this season. 100%. No? We need a great start. And to be honest yeah, with you... Yeah, I was right. We're playing our home. home? Club, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we need to correct that home result from last season. We should be winning 3 0 because we lost 2 1. Do you reckon we can sign the player before then? Maybe more. <laughs> <Nah, laughs> Bruh, no. it's Wednesday. Finally. Today was the last day to register a player for the weekend. Okay. Probably, probably. probably by the end of this, this month, we, you can hear one or two names. Right, but I'm not really confident about that. And so if, I was to, if I was to put it like you said, mm -hmm. P, I would love Manchester to beat. Palace at least three one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want. I don't want it to be two one because mm -hmm. they beat us two one last season. Mm -hmm. At least three one would be like more dominant. Sweet revenge, yeah. But you just say three one. I don't know how our defense is gonna be. Oh uh, yeah. So let's just watch how it is for the first game in the Premier League this season, mm -hmm. and from there we know what we could talk about for the following weeks to come. Mm -hmm. But prediction wise, three one. Manchester winning three one. The new Jets. It's going to be 4-0. 4-0 United. Martial 2. Jeez. Rashford 1. I love that. I love Bruno that. Bruno 1. Penalty. Bruno always penalty. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think it's a good one. Like, Lampo was a lamp... Lamped. No, like, Lampo was lamped, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Mourinho said his costume was good. They say, why do you finish the way he does? <laughs> Because VR likes him. I know what's so funny about this pulling Bruno Fernandes when he scored 33 goals, only only like a couple was penalties and he scored most of the goals. But they don't want to talk about Mark Trash who scored 11 penalties to a point in 20, 22 goals. Mm -hmm. 11, so hot, almost half, half of his goals, goals were penalties. penalties. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to talk about him, guys, because he's British. And that's <laughs> why Mattel is my favorite Manchester mm -hmm. striker. He scored 23 goals, but how oh, he scoring penalties? Like, he's natural. He's natural. Why scoring pennies? 
I think he only took one or two penalties this last season. I think two. Two? Yeah. Yeah, because he missed, remember he missed three in the beginning of the season, which he didn't take penalty for a very long time. Mm. And he took one, I think, two. Yeah. If I could be right. Two. My prediction, I'm just going to go with a safe 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 2-0. 2-1 to my night. If anything, if he was to rectify, it would be 2-1 to my night. I'm not going to go crazy because I feel like we're going to start slow. We're going to be a bit sluggish and in the first 30 minutes to get into the game. We're going to huff and puff, you know. I don't think everyone's fit yet. Palace will be a bit fit because, actually, to be yeah. fair, we played last weekend but we didn't have a full team. Full team where they had their full team. So they'll probably be in the fitness level a bit ahead of us. But I'm just going to go with a 2-0, two 2-1, no, two at least if we're going to concede victory. If we don't, I'm going to start crying and my match reaction is going to be peak for you guys, bro. Well, yeah, guys, I can't remember the last time I cried. It was 2004, was in Africa. <laughs> was it Aspen final? Yeah. Yeah. Aspen final against Aspen. Well, I cried. Right, right. And I remember as soon as the game finished, my mom called me. She used to live in the UK and she mm -hmm. called me to ask me because she knew how I was going to feel. She actually called me to console me that day. So I hope that never happens. Let's hope it doesn't matter. I'm going to cry again. Let's hope, guys. Anyway, guys, we are. We'd like to say thank you for watching as well. Of course, we've reached the end of the show. It's been great. It's been fantastic, guys. And remember to, to subscribe to Red United TV. Make sure you smash that like button as well. And remember to share. And I'm, where can the people find you? I've got socials. My social media are um, on Snapchat. You can follow me on I'm OK. Yeah. One word. Mm -hmm. My Instagram account is mm -hmm. Pretty Flacco mm -hmm. underscore one six. Yeah. And Jace, Mr. Anonymous, Mr. Discreet, where can the people try to find you? Um, <laughs> you can find me in a library somewhere, reading some books. He's always got the same box. <laughs> reading books or reading catching, books, 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 catching on Red United TV, TV. guys. Mr. Discreet doesn't want you to know anything about him. There guys, you, you know about me, the social or above, of course. You know, follow the Instagram yeah. page of Red United TV, which is Red United TV 1. If you want to follow my personal Instagram page, it's Ivorian underscore Spice, you know. And if you want to follow my Instagram, it's Ivorian. I mean, if you want to follow my Facebook. Twitter, it's uh, Ivorian Spice, you know, with the underscore as well. Guys, remember, guys, make sure you keep it united and keep it red united. We out. Peace out.